So deep ocean trenches are places where one plate, an oceanic plate, submerges or subducts underneath another plate, usually a continental plate. It bends, it cracks, it fractures, it's intense pressure, pulling the other plate down with it, and so therefore going down, forming the deepest parts of our ocean. These trenches that are the deepest parts of our ocean are actually part of what we call the Hadal Zone. And the Hadal Zone is 6,000 meters down to 11,000 meters. And that zone is, is there because we actually see a, two things. There's a change in fauna, basically, that we see when we go below 6,000 meters. The composition of species is a little bit different. Um, the other demarcation that we give it is, is one of technology and how far we can reach. Right? We can go down to 6,500 meters, 7,000 meters with current existing technologies, submersibles, uh, human-occupied vehicles, tethered vehicles. Uh, when you get below that, there's only like two vehicles in the world that can go down there beyond that. So we've always drawn that line. The technology, the difficulty of working in great pressure puts different uh, constraints and limitations on what we can do. Deep ocean trenches are inhabited by uh, shrimp, amphipods, small uh, shrimp-like crustaceans uh, that actually in the trenches get very large. Um, maybe a foot long, these guys, and, and we only find them that big there. Uh, and also isopods, other kinds of crustaceans. Um, we see uh, in, in some of the less deep trenches, we see fish, basically down to 8,000 meters we've seen them. Uh, uh, we see a lot of worms, uh, but we haven't explored very much of our trenches. Uh, where we have been able to explore and sample, we find very diverse microbial ecosystems. More than 200 species are known uh, when it comes to forams. These are single-celled animals that live on the sediments. There's, there's over 400 species known. Just what we've been able to get back sample-wise has let us know that. So it, we know there's life in the deepest trenches. That wasn't always thought of being that way. Uh, and we know that there's some diversity to it. That most of the, of the different phyla that we have are represented in the trenches. So we know the diversity is getting there. But without more exploration, it's very hard to say what's, what's down there. For a, for a deep sea biologist, the trenches are fascinating for looking at adaptations, right? You've got massive amounts of pressure, you've got total darkness and, and cold temperatures, but it's that pressure that really has to, things have to adjust. And one of the problems you have with an increasing pressure is your ability to have your cells function properly. There's, you know, we all know there's machinery in our cells that allow us to respire and do certain tasks. And when you get to such pressure, the cells are squeezed so tightly that machinery can't operate. There's enzymes and proteins that, are, that have to align a certain way, that have to fold a certain way. If they can't do that, they can't function. So the adaptations that they have in these deep trenches is they have an enzyme called uh, opiziolites. It's a group of enzymes. And these enzymes actually make the cell larger. They, they, they expand the cell to give it room to, for these enzymes and proteins to move. Without that, you, you know, it won't happen. It, life can't exist. And so what they've done, what we see now with increasing depth, and certainly in fish, we see more and more of these pezeolite enzymes. The, the current estimate, if you, if, you, if you believe it, makes the deep ocean trenches just as productive as reef systems in the tropics. Right? That's a mind-blowing. If I told you that 45% that, that, that of our ocean, which, which is in the Hadal region where trenches are, could be more productive than, than the, rid, the, the reef systems around you know, the, the tropical areas of Earth. That would be amazing. Think of the diversity that lives on, 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 on coral reefs, right? Because of that productivity that's there. This could be in the trenches. I think we haven't seen enough of the trenches at all. We've seen a pinprick on a mountain, right? When it comes to what we've seen in, in the trenches. Very, very little has been explored of the deep ocean trenches. I wish I could give a percentage. I mean, it's, it's less than 0.1%, if that. I mean, the state of the art right now for us, uh, for exploring deep ocean trenches, is to put down an elevator or a lander. It's basically a, a frame that has a camera on it, uh, maybe a baited trap on it to attract animals, because we can't go f track them down with these, these kinds of vehicles. But it's just a free-falling lander. Uh, it'll, it'll do time-lapse photography, it'll look at the bait, it'll see the animals that come in, the fish, the amphipods, uh, shrimp will come in, uh, and polychaete worms might come in, and, and then it gets released and comes to the surface and we look at the, at, the, at, the, at the imagery. Now, we do have submersible vehicles now, we have the, the hybrid ROV Nereus, 
uh, highly effective at going full ocean depth. Uh, it's been uh, in the in the in the uh, in the Marianas Trench and the Challenger Deep in, in 2009, and we also have Jim Cameron's submarine, the Deep Sea Challenger, that can also get there. But it's so limited. Those are so. It's like a it's like a pin light uh, in Manhattan, right, uh, on a little piece of asphalt in Manhattan. That's what we've seen. And so what we're hoping to do next year is actually do the first systematic exploration, going down at thousand meter increments to look at the ecosystems that are there, the diversity of life that's there, sample that diversity of life, uh, photograph it, document it in, in situ, uh, and then collect samples of the, of the substrate, of the sediments of the rocks to see what they're living on. I mean, this is, this is completely exploration, you know, terra incognita. It's very difficult to work in trenches, and it's, it's all about accessibility. Uh, getting a, a vehicle down to those depths is not easy. It takes new technologies and new approaches to how we dive down there. So you can't use a traditional umbilical tether, uh, a tether-like vehicle, uh, because under its own weight, that tether will snap but before you, well before you get down to the trenches. Uh, and so we have to come up with light fiber technologies that we've developed with the Navy that, that allow us to go that, that full depth uh, that, that we want, that can still get the information back. The video has to come back. We have to be able to manipulate and sample things, and that takes power. And you know, you're putting electrical systems into seawater to begin with. Then you're putting crushing pressures on top of that, and you're putting cold temperatures on top of that. And just the distance to get there, right, it, it, it takes nine hours for, for the uh, hybrid ROV Nereus just to descend there to get there uh, under its battery power, and then nine hours to get back to go seven miles. Um, Jim Cameron and his submarine was able to go down through a different approach. He, he made his almost a, a vertical rocket that um, took him an hour and 20 minutes to get to the bottom, full of weight. And he just shot like a rocket to the bottom and it took him 70 minutes to get back up to the surface. You don't want to linger down in these depths if the, you know, with all, these, uh, with all the um, uh, uh, technology you are bringing to bear, you, things can go wrong. So you have to be, simple is always better. Uh, and so it, it really has been the, the pressure that's been the most difficult thing uh, to, to overcome when it comes to developing technologies to get access. We can learn a great deal by going to trenches, and, and, it, and it spans the gamut from, from geology to biology, uh, microbiology to chemistry. It's all going to be within trenches, from understanding how earthquakes are formed, through one tr a trench uh, system. It, the, the greatest earthquakes happen near trenches. Tsunamis are generated from those things. Critically important to understand. What's also happening is we're seeing now that there's more carbon in these, in these trenches than we thought. There's more productivity being put in to the trenches. Orders of magnitude what we thought from before. That is impacting our understanding of the global carbon cycle, right? This is, this is a, a carbon sink, basically, on our planet. That if we understand what that is, that'll, that'll change our, about our, our views about what we can put carbon-wise into our environment and into our ocean, and what the ocean can do to absorb that carbon and ultimately, I think, alter climate. So, so there's, a, there's also the novel adaptations that we have there that these animals are going to have. We know they already have them. We already know that some of the enzymes they have are being used in field testing for Alzheimer's, right? So, you know, there's, we have literally touched the tip of the iceberg when it comes to, to the fullness and, and, and richness that the trenches have to offer for us and our understanding of how life evolved on Earth to how biomedical applications can be, can be harnessed uh, and used from trenches.